taking a look at the scenario we've created so far in this 101 series. I'm going to click on my Google Sheets module and let's configure it. We go to search method, search by path, that is the default. I am selecting my Google Drive, which is also the default. And then right here, it'll be blank when you first set it up and you'll need to select the spreadsheet that you actually want to use. Then you choose the sheet name. This is, you know, you always got to choose your default, but if you have more than one sheet in your spreadsheet, you might need to define sheet three, sheet four, wherever the data exists, and then cell A2. And if we pop on over to my Google Sheet, we can see that cell A2 has space graffiti pattern, high detail, science geometry. It's one of the prompts that I use to generate my colorful all over print hoodies and tees. It passes that into the image generator. And if you're not seeing this, that's under advanced settings. A lot of different modules will have an advanced tab where you get quite a few different options to customize. Now I'm going to configure my OpenAI Generate an Image module, which is as simple as selecting the generator I want to use. I'm going to use Dolly 3. And for my prompt, this is where the magic of make happens. We have an empty field, and notice when I select it, a little flyout happens. And what does it list? It lists my Google Sheets module, and there's only one thing that I can select here. If I click on it, it puts value down in my prompt. What is that doing? This is saying, in order to generate an image, here is the prompt that you're going to use. And what is my Google Sheets doing? My Google Sheets is grabbing a prompt out of my AI Print On Demand Store sheet, specifically the prompt that exists in cell A2. I'm going to keep my size 1024 by 1024, but you also have the option of landscape or portrait. And then we have quality. I'm going to select HD. Then I have style, vivid, response format I am keeping as URL so I can show you the image here in a minute. And then the last thing, we need to save it. So you want to give it a title up here in the corner. You have text that you can edit. Create an image from a Google Sheet. That's what I'm going to title it. And then I'm going to hit save. Now let's run this process and see what happens. We have a little play button right here that initiates the process. And then you're going to see right here a list of the processes as they are happening. If you encounter any errors, it will list out the errors right here. It has taken the value from my Google Sheet. And we can see even while it's running output, it shows me the value right here. And it grabs that cell. It passed it over to OpenAI. It has successfully completed. So let's click over here. And you can see that the input on this module is the prompt that it grabbed over here and the output is going to be a URL. This is the image that it has generated. You can double click on it, highlight it, copy it, and then paste it into your web browser and here is what it created for me. That is the basic data flow behind all of the Make modules. One module grabs information from one platform, passes it to the other, it does something with that information, then passes it to another module, which does something with that information and then passes it to another, creating really whatever your imagination can conjure. This little button right here, Explain Flow, is really for much bigger scenarios. So this little two module scenario, when I click it, goes from there to there, really simple. But see, not, not really helpful for a tiny workflow like this one. But let's say that I want to go to something like one of my more complex workflows, like my social media magic wand. So let's say there is something broken in my workflow, and I think it's related to the fact that the data is not passing in the right order. Instead of having to sit through this thing and wait for the entire thing to go through, I can click this explain flow, and this is going to show me the data flow. Each module, where it goes, the next module, and you can watch your data and see the direction that it's going to flow. Sometimes if you're having an issue watching this play out, you can see something and be like, oh, I, I don't want it to do that at all. I actually wanted it to go here first. You've identified your problem, and now you can reconfigure your scenario. And I'm going to add one last module to the basic workflow we're building in this example. 
For those of you who are unfamiliar with DALI, the image generator that I'm using in this workflow, it only saves images for about 24 hours and then they disappear. Let's say I generated a bunch of images one day, they're all going to go bye-bye if I don't do something with those images. So what I'm going to do, we're going to add another module and I'm going to add a Google Photos module. And we are going to select Google Photos and I just want to upload a media, upload a media item. Now, just like your Google Sheets, if you're not already connected, connects the exact same way. Whatever account you're connected to here is going to connect to that particular Google Photos library and you'll want to choose file. It's going to grab the file from your OpenAI. Under description, if you want to give it a description, and you select the album on your Google Photos account. So I'm just going to select blogger right here for example's sake. It's telling me value must not be empty, so I'll say description. Okay, now we've saved. But first, I'm going to make a change. When we first set this up a second ago, I did URL just so I could grab the URL and show you that. Now I'm going to choose image file because this particular module wants me to do a file instead of a URL. Now I'm going to click save and run. And we can see it's already taken the cell. It's passed it into the generate an image, which is now prompting an image from the data in my Google Sheet. Then once that is done, it's going to take the image and upload it to my Google Photos. And there we go. The process completed without any errors. 111, meaning they have all completed successfully. And let's go to my Google Photos. And there we go. Right in my Google Photos. Hot off the presses. That concludes this lesson in understanding basic data flow. Next up, we're going to dig into some of these controls in the user interface and kind of do a deep dive on them. See you next time.